Hola, zaku aku kipenzi. Well, another episode is here. I feel like I have been talking about heavy matters. And today, it might be light, but again, the lessons are heavy. This is me moving in with my boyfriend. And it is the first time I'm talking about it and no one ever knew. Okay, a few people knew. No one knew about it. My mother found out by accident. <laughs> We'll talk about that, but there's lessons I carried. I only survived five months and here I am to now talk about it. Welcome to another episode of In All Honesty. My fabulous name is Oliver Rawa. Wadao, tuanzie tu hapokwa. Uwe! <laughs> so um this was i think 2018 if i'm not wrong yeah so in 2018 i decided to move in with my then boyfriend and i don't know where this idea came from um so he moved out of where he was living i moved out of where i was living and then we moved into like a bigger house and life began hey okay so we hadn't dated for that long before and i'm just the kind of person at the time i was the kind of person of ah let me go and try if it doesn't work out see i leave see we've all come with our things you know if if kuhama si she that after to deposit and rent and you leave so to me it wasn't a big deal moving in with someone i was just like uh this i really love this person they love me back it can't be that hard to stay under the same roof with them <laughs> guys can we laugh together now <laughs> let me just start on the things the things i realized the minute i moved in with this person one i can freaking not share space It does not matter how much I love you, my friend. I cannot live under the same roof with somebody else. Well, I've lived with my family my whole life, but then I've been single for a couple of years and I've lived alone for those years and just waking up. There are times I'd wake up, I'd wake up and <laughs> I'd wake up in shock because I wasn't expecting to wake up next to someone like you you sleep and your head forgets where you are right so um there were things like those so uh I remember sometimes on on the new bed sometimes I couldn't sleep on the new bed so I'd have to go to the other bedroom which had now the bed that I took from my house and that's where I could sleep so I didn't know what some of those things were and he's the one who explained it to me he told me maybe your bed has some familiarity and that is why it's been it's a bit difficult for you sometimes to sleep in our new bed so yeah there were things like those and then the other thing why i could not share space um this is when i began to realize all the childhood traumas i had i had never thought i had trauma never in my life you know and and then i'm an introvert like i don't get to meet a lot of people a lot of people don't get to dissect my personality and tell me you know uh, you're like this kind of person no i didn't have any of that so for the first time was me coming face to face with all the childhood traumas that i ever went through and now they were manifesting and they were coming out big and the big guns you know so i was just where where So when I'm talking about childhood traumas you see how um as kids uh growing up I know my sisters are going to re- refuse this but it I don't know why they refuse and I know it is true I was the most responsible sister growing not even sister sibling the only responsible sibling growing up the other responsible one was the last one so we can't count on her <laughs> So I grew up 
taking care of the whole family. I, there are times my parents were not uh, uh, available or they had left or traveled and they entrusted me with the running of the family completely. And I remember this, this time after I finished high school, the minute I got home, my mom sent away the house help and she was just like, ah, now my, you know, my golden child is here. We can do things. So I was entrusted to take care of it and I took care of everything and everyone perfectly fine. I was an introvert. That means I was always available. Nili kwanga kwa nyumba all throughout. Alafu also, I was I was very keen with what I do. So if you tell me to wash something, it will be very clean. If you tell me to take care of people, it will be, you know, everything is became perfect. So those things I did for very long. By the time I was moving into my house, me, I didn't realize, but my house apparently is extremely, extremely neat and clean. So this is me living with someone else. Hey, I do not, the, like, they're, they're, they're just, like, small, like, there's a way my house used to be. And this person, this person was very clean, but still their level of cleanliness could not match up to mine. Okay. So even before we moved into the house, he must have seen it. He probably, we were also, maybe we were also young and in love and we didn't think about it. So the day, um, just before we moved in, I went to wash the house and it had already been washed by the caretaker, but me, I was just like, no. So that's what I usually do. I go to the house the day before I move in and then I scrub the hell out of that house. Every damn thing, walls, toilets, everything. The house remains as clean as new. And then I go and bring my things and move in. That's how I've been moving into houses. So that's what I did for our house. And he was just like, you know what, babe? You can chill. We can get someone to clean. But me, I'm just like, I do not think someone will clean the way I clean, okay? <laughs> so, um... I cleaned and cleaned and cleaned. And so when I was living with this guy, whenever I'd clean, it would bring up my childhood, um, all those things I went through when I was a child. So, you know, when I was a kid, I would clean up and my sisters wouldn't. So I was responsible for things and it felt very bad that all my other sisters could get away with things. And my mom would just be like, Unajua uyo ni dada? Si unelewa dada yako? Ah, uyo ni mtoto wachana na yeye. Unajua na nini mkubwa wako ufai kubishana na yeye. So at the end of the day, I ended up doing a lot of things in the house and my sisters got away with it. And I remember that is why I wanted to move out so badly. In my life, I knew from the time I was like in class G7, me, I knew. One day when I grow up, the, I am moving out of my mother's house. That is the one dream I had. I didn't even know how I'm going to get a job, but it's people are dreaming of being doctors. Mm. Me, I just want to move out. I just want to live in a house that's my own, where I don't have to clean after other people. So here I am in another house where this guy is just clean, but I still feel like there's... There's, there's a level of cleanliness he must he must get to. So at the end of the day, I was frustrated. I was constantly frustrated. Like, you know, when I lived alone, the laundry basket would be like just halfway through, you know, um, by the end of the week. There was no many, the, there wasn't that much clothes. But now by day three, the laundry basket is full. I'm just like, Phew. I can't, and I can't stand things like those. I can't stand a, a full laundry basket. I can't stand, um, well, now I can, in my house, I don't know why I can, because I know when I'm going to wash it, but I can't stand um, dirty dishes in the in the sink. Sometimes I'd cringe when he was cooking, because I just know it's me who has to go and clean up the kitchen. He has cleaned it up, but not as clean as I can get it. So there were things like those, and I felt constantly and constantly frustrated. And then there was, you know how us women, we are raised for men? You're right, right? I don't know if it happened in other households. So when my mom was raising us, she always... And my mom is like pastor's wife. My dad is not even a visitor's person, but I don't know. I, my mother and my father are completely different people. My dad is an introvert. My mom is an extrovert. I do not know how they live. But that is something I'm going to talk about also in my relationship. So... My mom always had guests. She was always hosting. She was, you know, like we always had people coming over to the house. There are some who are staying, you know, 
So we our <laughs> I saw a video on TikTok the other day and it is so true. The video about how moms should treat um how moms expect you to treat guests. So um having been coached your entire life how to treat people who are inside your space. Now when I lived with my boyfriend, I was particularly always thinking about um always thinking about something you know when i lived when i live alone i'm fine i can go home eat ice cream and sleep you know but when i started living with my boyfriend i started i went back to my mother's house where i was making breakfast and thinking of lunch i'm eating lunch i'm thinking of supper i'm eating supper i'm thinking we haven't grabbed breakfast for tomorrow and this guy was chill this guy was always like babes you just just chill we'll get we'll buy even food as we are going to the office there's no worry so for him it was easy for him to try and comfort me but he didn't understand that this is something that clearly has been what do you call it this is something that's in my system it's almost in my dna i you you have to constantly take care of people so i'd be yeah you'd constantly take care of you so sometimes even sometimes when uh, the basket the laundry basket was full i i was washing not because the laundry basket was full but i was washing so that in case there are pants or like something he needed he'd get them you get like that's some that's some messed up shit but my parents taught me to always like take care of people and so that mother mood came in when i moved in with this guy and it was it was hella frustrating so i was always crying he's trying to comfort me he doesn't understand what's happening so um but man he was a really he was a really secure person in his emotions so he'd always just walk me through and he'd be like i I he didn't know I was going through these things and it's all manifesting now and he also doesn't know what to do with them so the best he can do is just like to hold me like just hug me and wait for me to stop crying and then like we can snack and watch a movie and do something fun so he was there but I could feel I could literally feel that it wasn't fair for him okay but I also could not control these things because I had never known. These are things that I had ne- I had no idea. Me I thought once I moved out of my mother's house, I was done with these traumas. I didn't think these traumas would manifest the minute I was living with someone. So, where well, that was one. The other thing is that this guy is extroverted and I am a complete introvert. So here's the thing, this house that we shared. You see me the way I can stay in my house for a whole week no one has seen me. Even the wochi can come and just knock to see is there a dead body inside here. This guy. So now my house has guests. And you can imagine now we've already talked about how me and how I'm programmed to treat guests. So my house has guests. So every time his friends are coming over and it takes i have to like look for food look for stuff like clean the house like make sure people are comfortable and you know and while that's happening now me i can't be comfortable me i'm running around and people are just seated drinking telling stories now that's the other thing when people are talking i'm 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 scared of people i do not know so these are his friends yes they are good people i've met them before but sija was where are you so i'm still I'm I'm still scared. I don't know what to say. I don't know if what I can say is correct. Like if you're if you're an introvert and you overthink, you know how it feels in social situations. Now this boyfriend of mine had gone and even made friends in the same building. So sometimes he's invited upstairs to do to go for what party. Me I'm just like bib me I cannot. But I didn't tell him I I can't. I would tell him you go I'm coming. I'm showering. So I would shower and then just bum on the couch. Um he try calling and just be like I I <laughs> I'd try stalling so much and then he'll come and he'll be just like you you do, you don't want to go Cindy and I'd be like yes so that's how I didn't um I didn't get to meet even my neighbors he made very good friends with the people who lived just below us so I was just like where so this guy would never pass me he'd always like 
he'd, he'd always wait for me and then he'd be like, ha, ah, sasa, how are you doing? And he starts a whole story and he just doesn't know. Me, I don't want to talk to you. I know we are neighbors, but we are not friends. And his kids and the wife also just were very friendly. It's okay. Greeting is fine, but I'm not ready to talk to you guys. Okay. I'm not ready to talk. Okay. So, um, people never got that. And now here's the thing. I got to understand, you see how when we were growing up, we used to say, Nani amewa dema kona rochafu? I realized I am the demo rochafu. <laughs> yeah, because I was that person who couldn't talk to people. And it's not a tiko buyer. I just, there's a lot of anxiety that comes with meeting people and talking to people. And I don't understand how other people don't even experience it. Anyway, yeah, that was the other thing. So apart from all my childhood traumas just coming to the surface, we had completely two different personalities. And it was a little difficult for me because he went everywhere and made friends. And I was just at the corner and people were like, what's up with your girlfriend? And there's nothing wrong with your girlfriend. Your girlfriend is just doesn't like people. And it's as simple as that. <laughs> um, that's when also I realized um, I have a flaw in my communication system. Because the, every time now I started feeling these feelings, I couldn't communicate them to this guy. So whenever I felt overwhelmed, I started crying or I would shut down and go to sleep. And he didn't know what to do with me because I could not express my emotions every time. And this happened when I was like, I think also this was a childhood trauma because when I was a kid, whenever I tried to explain myself, my mom would shut me up. Okay. So I don't know. A lot of us have probably gone through that. And so you find yourself just not having an outside to date i don't have an outside voice a lot of people think i'm very loud but if you meet me in person i can't shout i can't scream i can the, i think the loudest i can go is when i'm singing so yeah and even when i'm singing i always had a problem with projection my mic has to be set different so i think just the idea of always being a quiet baby also here no one ever asked how you're feeling. No one ever asked what you're supposed to do. You do realize in all the situations I'm describing, I was the servant. There's no particular point where it was me who was supposed to now give orders and people what to do. Okay. So I didn't have, I didn't have, there was no way I could express myself. I would start by speaking and that's how it happens in arguments. And I've told people ask me how, why I deal with things I deal with the way I do that. But it's because I had never learned to express myself. And that's something I'm learning now, even at a restaurant, if I'm served badly, I never talk. I never ask for the manager. I leave. I will walk away. If you served me badly, you'll pay for that bill, bitch. I don't, I don't, I don't exchange words. At a supermarket, at its I find a cashier with attitude. I leave those things there. I walk away. I go shop somewhere. I start shopping afresh at another supermarket. I don't care because I'm not able to argue. So, <laughs> so you find even jobs that I, where I was supposed to explain myself, like jobs where they were just being unfair and I had to explain myself. I would try, but... If I found an unreasonable person, I'd quit. I, I couldn't express myself. And I didn't know that this is something that would come very handy when it came to me being in a relationship. So this is my boyfriend. I'm trying to tell him how I'm feeling. I'm trying to tell him I'm sad. Um, I think I'm feeling angry about how I was treated as a kid. I think that's what's manifesting right now. That's what you and I are experiencing. I wish I could say all these things using my words, but I could not. Most of the time I just broke down, cried and cried and cried. And sometimes I just go to sleep. Like that's how, that's how I deal with things. I escape. I ha I'm a better person now, guys. I can express myself. So... <laughs> Um, the other thing that I realized was a bit off the, while living with this guy, there's a time, so we were just chilling and he was like, um, I was also ab about this thing of not expressing myself. I was also worried about telling my parents about getting someone. Now, I don't know why I had cold feet, but 
this was not like at your wedding, at your marriage. I was just to tell my parents, you know what? Um, so I got a boyfriend. I might want him to come for introduction, things like those. But I found myself completely scared at the age of 20, 20, 27. I'm a, how old was I? Three months, three years ago. Uh, probably 26 i don't know yeah at the age of 26 i was extremely scared about telling my parents i have a boyfriend i don't know if also that's a trauma but me i was scared as hell so this guy is like honey what what's what's the issue me i'm just like you don't know my parents you don't know my parents and for me um the other thing why i moved out of my parents house is i hate explaining myself I hate coming back and being asked, where were you? I hate going places and having to say where I'm going. Me, I just want to live my life. So I knew telling my parents would bring questions and I hate answering questions. I hate questions. So um, that was the reason behind why I didn't want to tell my parents. But this guy was just like, what? Like, let's see. So he was very serious and he was like what if we do an ag wedding in november i think that was like in march or something and i'm just like um okay <laughs> so we were both we we're both november babies so our birthdays are two days away uh, two days apart and two days apart so I'm just like, um, I said, okay, that's exactly what I said. When he said, can we do an AG wedding um, in November? It's our birthday. That's how we can celebrate our birthday this year. I was just like, okay. Like the shock, the shock, guys. And um, before that also, um, I had had a pregnancy scare and I went around and I was just, it was crazy, man. So after that, that's when I took a contraceptive. Um, the contraceptive was a, was the three-month depot. That shit is fucking, that, it's fucked up. Let's just say that. So um, after the pregnancy scare, I took a contraceptive. Now the contraceptive was crazy. Um, my skin was glowing as hell. Um, added a little weight that wasn't bad but the worst thing about this contraceptive is that it takes away your desire for sex completely so why the fuck do i have a contraceptive if i don't even feel like having sex now <laughs> so yeah that was something that was very big for me and that also brought some strife into the relationship because i was never in the mood for sex and well, I mean, what is your partner supposed to do in that situation? You're technically living together. So it was also frustrating for him and we tried to talk it through and I tried to tell him it's a contraceptive. So we decided to wait it out. That contraceptive that I had taken, the last shot that I had taken, we decided to wait it out and then we'll take a different contraceptive after that. So while we were waiting it out, I guess, yeah the moving out where we didn't we didn't last that long when i was beginning this podcast i said five months guys <laughs> yeah so I, I i don't even remember what i was talking about um it was a communication oh talking to my parents so i didn't want to tell my parents and now that i've mentioned um the pregnancy scare and how this guy talked about marriage which if you look at it is technically a proposal he proposed that we get married in november okay so if I look at it, that's the, that was the moment for me after that proposal, the next, like a couple of weeks, I, I kept thinking about it because of how scared I was. So I kept thinking about it and I realized, shit, the pregnancy scare was a fucking scare because I don't fucking want kids. And I hadn't come to this realization. I mean, I had never been in this space with anyone. I didn't have to think about having children. So the that just like brought it out for me. I didn't, and I didn't, I, I had no idea how to present this information to this guy who loved kids to death. Okay. So I realized that I don't want kids. And then the second thing is I realized I do not want to marry. I do not want a marriage. Even if you want to pursue me right now, please understand that you and I will not get married. I do not believe in the institution of marriage. Yeah. And I realized that while living with this guy. 
I'm okay moving in with you. I'm okay us dating for 10 years to eternity. But I will not sign a paper to show that I am legally married to you. I do not believe in it, but that is me at this particular point. That might change in the future, but it's a bit... Um, that, that marriage shit is a bit shady for me right now. I'm just not in... So I wasn't into marriage. I'm not into marriage and kids. And so I realized I'm living with someone. I'm not having sex with them. Um, I can't communicate with them. I'm always crying. It's not their fault, but they, they are my trigger. <laughs> I'm always crying or asleep or frustrated. This is not a way to live. This is clearly not a way to live. So um, I realized all these things and then... And you see, the way I can't communicate to him, you know, he'd, he'd sit me down. This guy would sit me down and ask me, babe, I know, I know you've, you're, you're not okay. Like, can we, do you want us to move into separate houses? And that I still could not answer him. And in my head, I know, I know I want us to move out into separate houses. But the, me expressing that, I was unable to. And I was so, now looking back, I'm so mad at myself for those things. I'm just like, Olive, can you, Nini, you know. But then, um, yeah, I told him, can we, eventually, I told him, I've, I've been searching for a house. It would be nice if you're also searching for a house. Unless you can afford the one we are in, then, no, ask me, I'm moving. So I think also just the house holding some memories. None of us wanted to stay there. So we decided to move into separate houses. So we started looking for houses and he found a house first. But he waited for me to find a house so that we move the same month because his other option was moving out and leaving me with the house and then I can move out whenever. But, you know, men men can find houses. Men, whatever house works. Kitanda imetosha, kiti imetosha, vitu za jikoni You know, they're fine. So, um, yeah. Uh, so for me, I had I had a few more specifics. A separate bathroom and toilet. Oh, sijui nini, you know. Uh, yeah, it took me a while to find a house like that with the budget that I had. And I did find the house. So he helped me move into my house. And then him, he moved into his house. And we dated for a couple of... After that, we dated for, yeah, a couple of months. I don't remember how long. But I remember October the 10th of 2019. Yeah, October the 10th of 2019. Um this guy showed up to my house and broke up with me and after we had moved out the relationship was really good like everything just was set back to a really good time we enjoyed our time together the time we spent at work during the week made us grow like you know um you you miss each other more so over the weekend it's fun and you're doing fun things and you're just happy so the relationship went back i was out um, by the time we had moved out the contraceptive had faded the yeah the one i was on had faded so my sex life was up there again so everything was going so well until on the ninth um, on the night of the ninth, I had talked to this guy and we, he called, he was cool peoples, you know, and on the 10th, he showed up to my house with a whole load of things like just shopping. I don't know why he shopped that much for me, but he just showed up with it. He'd come to the house with stuff. He'd come with like wine and food and stuff, you know, but just showing up with a whole like it was shopping i used for like three months or something it was so much so much he just brought so much and i didn't understand why i was like babe we don't shop like this you know we just come with whatever you can use like for the week or something so i didn't know that was the piece of hurry <laughs> and he just told me um this shit is not working out so i'll talk about the breakup on another episode but this episode, I was basically to just talk about moving in with my boyfriend and the lessons I learned. Now, how my mother and my sister found out by accident. My mother is those parents. So she was just like, there's a conference in Nairobi. And oh, you mimi ni koki kuyu. Eh? That, that, so my mother has to sleep in my house. Yeah. 
So I have to go and pick her up. I pick her up. Eh, she gets into the house. She's like, eh, hey, nasi umeomoka hii nyumba yote because we were living in a two bedroom house. It was huge. Um I was so mama I just waited her for for her to remove her shoes, take the tour of the house and for her to sit down. And then I was like, "So mami, eh hii nyumba yote ni yangu lakini naishi na mtu mwingine." <laughs> and she was like, "Where?" Well, I could see the shock in her face and then she didn't ask any more questions. So, uh my boyfriend came, they talked. I don't know what they talked about, but eh, No, they actually didn't talk. The whole night was just like awkward. So my mom is just seated in silence and as we were trying to feed, like prepare food and serve her, and then she went to sleep and also I went to sleep and <laughs> in the morning she left for her conference and then she was to leave and then go kabisa kabisa like um, go back to Eldoret after the conference. So she didn't come back to the house. So I think she I think she told my sister because my sister conveniently conveniently had a baby shower the next week and my sister is like so I'm coming to Nairobi I'm come and sleep to your place I'm coming to sleep at your place so that's how my sister also came and met my boyfriend and found out I was living with my boyfriend so um my sister and my mom called me and they're like um so we're not going to tell people until you come and introduce him officially I was just like you people are joking. You don't know me. I don't know you the way you know me. <laughs> yeah, so it never happened and when they asked about the boyfriend I told them eh ilisha sasa mimi nitafanyaje, you know. Um so I'll talk about the breakup um in another episode, but basically yeah, this was me and moving in with someone. It was heavy guys. I I, I would not recommend one star never do not do not move in with someone you think you like it works for other people especially my goodness if you have lived by yourself if you are used to life on your own can you please prepare prepare your mind your soul your physical self prepare everything let me tell you this guy used to there's a time i came home and found he'd brought someone to clean just because he didn't want me to clean and still that person hadn't cleaned as well as i wanted so that person left having been paid and me the person who can't express myself i started cleaning the house again when there's someone who was already paid to clean the house <laughs> hey what now what now i anyway it was it was a difficult um five months but i love it because of how of the lessons i walked away with i feel like it was a needed it was needed i feel bad that i bled on this guy because that's something that should not happen but i did i did not know i had traumas i they only manifested when now i was in this situation that was a, a trigger and i didn't know that so i am i'm 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 sad that he had to experience that and deal with all the traumas that i had from a kid from the time i was a child but well here we are today and so um after after everything and everything in the space that i am currently in uh people need to know that i am healing so i'm teaching myself these things that i've said in this particular episode all those things i'm teaching myself to communicate i'm teaching myself to express myself I'm teaching myself to be okay with other people's standards of cleanliness. <laughs> um I'm teaching myself how to say say things when they say things when they come, you see? Like right now if you're going to date me, if on the first date I will tell you about um me not wanting children, me not wanting a marriage. So these are things that I'm learning to do now. Um I'm also scouting for like a therapist and I'm trying to find money cuz these people do not they are not cheap. I mean if you love me please pay for a VK or a therapist. Those are the only two things I want to be paid for. Yeah, so for the therapist for that I really want to deal with childhood traumas. I feel like there's a lot of shit I went through as a child and a lot of it is affecting how I'm living right now even with people. So yeah. I'm looking to go I'm looking to do therapy 
for that particular, my, t- my childhood traumas, they manifested and I didn't like the person I was at that time when they were just showing up and coming to the surface. So yeah, I'm healing. At the moment, I'm healing and I love the space that I am in. I am I'm forever grateful to, for, for having dated that guy. He was a good person um, generally. Um, after the breakup is a whole new story that I will come with some other time. You can tell me in the comments if you want it to be the next episode. But that one will take me a little more time because it involves a lot of pain. Um, so, yeah, I'm healing. I'm healing. And I think it is very important that you also heal. Okay. If you go and search for those things that are your triggers, like find, put yourself in places where you can find out what is wrong with you so that you're a wholesome human being when you're meeting other people okay and this is to men and women because i don't want to go through this process of healing and being a good person and then i meet you and you you don't want to go and do the work and now i have to deal with your traumas do not bleed on me i am work i'm doing my best so that i'm not bleeding on anyone okay that was me and moving in with my boyfriend and i don't know if you've picked lessons from it but here is the thing i don't know if you're an introvert if you are do you want to date an extrovert i don't know but those make the best couples every couple i know who's like happy and they're complete completely opposite my mom is celebrating i don't know 36 the her 36th anniversary <laughs> yeah so yeah this was a long episode but i hope you picked lessons from it until next time babies i love you but i gotta live you my fabulous name is oliver rao in all honesty